Hey everybody, this is Brian. Welcome to the 30th Flutter tutorial. Wow, we got 30 of these so far. Today we're going to be covering radio buttons, or radio as they're called. They're these little circles. You've seen them before where you click one and the other one unchecks and it goes back and forth and you have little groups of these guys. So that's what we're going to cover today. We're going to do the bare basic implementation because these are still kind of beginner tutorials. Let's just jump right in here. And we've got our material package. We're going to say... Going to extend the stateful widget. And we're going to extend the state of the my app. All right. Going to do run app. Make a new material app. New my app. We've done this before, I'm just trying to flesh this out as fast as I can here. Override, and then we're going to say my app state, create state. All right. Why is this thing, isn't a type? Hmm, well. Oh if I did that. Alright, so let's actually flesh this out now. Widget. Alright, so <laughs> I like that widget. That was interesting. Alright, so we have this. Now we need to build this out and render it. And we're going to say return new scaffold and let's do that bang ooh new title I don't want a new title I want a new text where am I getting these things I think I'm just typing too fast for my brain all right so then we have our body So we've got a center. Let's actually make new center. That way it actually works. And all right, so we've got a new column here. And this is where we're going to deviate a little bit from what we've done in the past here. Um, I know if you've been watching some of these, you're probably going, okay, the same old design pattern over and over and over again. We're going to actually do this a little bit different. What we're going to do here is we're going to make a function. Called make radios. And we're going to call this right here. And this function will actually generate the radio buttons for us, wire everything up, and make it all nice and neat. And we'll return our list out. So, first thing we need to do is actually, you know, make some of these. So, we're going to say, List.add new radio. And you can see how it's got a value, a group value, and an unchanged. We're just going to save that and run this out. So the value, while this thing is loading, the value is the actual value of this specific control if you were to select it. The group value, because remember radios come in a group, the group value would be the value selected within that group. 
And the on change, of course, is this is a stateless widget, so we have to track that state. And here is the radio button all its glory. It's disabled because we are not tracking the on change, which is why it's grayed out. As you can see, we have kind of the same problem we had in the last tutorial with checkboxes where we don't have text or anything. So we're going to follow a very similar pattern here. And we're going to just say, hmm. I'm going to add a row. And then children, we're going to add a new text. Uh-oh, my background music died on me. There we go. Sorry about that. My uh, my headset has like this timeout, and for whatever reason, I can't get it to not timeout. So if I don't have some background music, and it's not registering through the uh, microphone. So if it's not playing anything through the speakers for, I think, like a minute, it shuts off. Really annoying when I'm recording a video. Okay, so we're going to say radio button. Actually, just call it radio. And then new radio. And then we have our stuff here. So let's say the value of this is zero. And uh, we need to actually track a value here. And we're going to say Wow, could I have misspelled that any worse? There we go. And we've seen this before, um, very, very familiar design pattern where we have to track the change and set the state. And we're going to say selected equal value, bang, grab this unchanged, and we want to track that change here. Now the group value is going to be the selected selected value here. So what's going on is we're going to have a row and in that row we'll have a text field or just a text that says, you know, radio. And then next to it we're going to have the actual radio which is going to have a value, the group value that's shared through them all and on and on and on we track the change. So we're going to just grab this, push that out through hot reloading, see what it looks like. Sure enough, bang. That works. So let's just do this for let's push that out. Hmm, that didn't quite work the way we wanted it to, did it? There we go. So now we have three radios, radio 0, 1, and 2. And you can see when we select one, the other ones are not selected. That's the group value right there. We are currently tracking that in there. And we can actually just say value 0, value 1, value 2. So we can see which one's which. Now, we have a very similar problem that we had with the checkbox, which is this text right here. If we were to try to click that, nothing happens. And if you have big, fat fingers like me, you're not, you know, a 10-year-old Asian kid, it's really hard to kind of click these specific little things. So as you might have guessed, when we go into the documentation, similar to the checkbox, there's a radio list tile. And the radio list tile is very, very similar. And we're going to actually flesh that out right now. So let's jump back into our code here and we're just going to say for int i equals zero i less than three all right so we're going to say list dot add new radio list tile and you see it has a very familiar signature here 
and we're going to break this out a little bit just so it's easier to kind of see and understand. All right, let's actually push that out there. So the value, we're just going to say I, whoopsie, I, the group value is selected and the unchanged is the actual value. Now when we look at our hot reload, bang, we have three. And we have similar to what we had in the previous tutorial where they share the state so that you can understand what's going on with state. And you can see now if we click off, it's the entire row. And we're going to fill those values in right now. So let's actually go in here and we're going to say title, new text, give it that title right there. And we've got our on changed here. We're going to say active color, colors.red. And we're going to give a subtitle of mm -hmm, new text. And we're just, I have no idea what to put here, so we're just going to say subtitle here. All right. And course our favorite the secondary I'll give it a new icon and I never know what icon we're just gonna say home why not and in something more production -y, you would actually say you know an icon for each one and let's push that out and ta-da in all its glory we now have much much fancier looking radio buttons or I should say radio list tiles. Um, very simple, very easy to understand control, um, very robust, and it's kind of one of the founding fathers of all controls ever since the dawn of graphic user interfaces. So uh, pretty simple, pretty easy to use. Um, one thing we haven't covered is how to have like groups of these. Um, it's a little bit more complex, but I just kind of wanted to uh, let you know how that worked. All right, so. Thank you for watching. I um, hope you found this educational and entertaining. Uh, the source code for this and all of the tutorials is out on my website, voidrealms.com. Uh, you can click on that, and then you can just simply go out to Flutter, and bang, you can pull down the source code for all of the tutorials all at once. Also, if you're so inclined, join the Void Realms Facebook group. There's 1,700 other programmers out there. We can definitely help you out if you have any questions.